This is the lab tutorial for creating tables in Microsoft Excel and Word using the principles of good tabular design from just plain data analysis. During the lab you'll create this table, the percent of people in poverty by categories of age, race, sex, region, and nativity from 2000 to 2009. You'll collect the relevant data online from the Census Bureau organize the data using Excel, and format the table using Word. Let me make two suggestions before you proceed. First, if you're unfamiliar with Excel, make sure you watch the tutorial I made available in Moodle. I assume that you know Excel basics like what the ribbon is and how to find different commands, what a worksheet is, the difference between rows, columns, and cells, how to refer to a specific cell, and what an Excel formula is. Second, I want to encourage you to take notes as you proceed through the lab so you're able to create your own tables for your research project without having to refer back constantly to this video. One last thing, to get full credit for the lab, you need to follow these video instructions carefully. The Excel and Word files you upload in Moodle must look exactly like the ones I create in this video. So first, we want to prepare the spreadsheet for the data. Open up Excel and create a new spreadsheet. Before you do anything else, save the file as table HWA for homework A. And you can save that wherever you'd like. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Um, you can put it in Dropbox if you want or on a flash drive, wherever. Now notice that there are three sheets here. On sheet one, create the skeleton of the table. An important principle to follow here is begin with the end in mind. I know what I want the table to look like, so I know what data to look for. So uh, we'll start typing in uh, the rows, male, female, white alone, black alone, I have all of the uh, uh, row headers uh, typed out in uh, column A. Notice that I started in uh, cell 2 there. Um, I'm going to widen that cell so it uh, um, uh, uh, covers the entire range. I can go ahead and grab this and, and adjust the column width this way. I can simply uh, uh, double click here and it'll widen the column to the widest part. I could also uh, select the column as it currently is and right click and go to column width and pick out a specific number. Right now it's 18.57, I'll pick 20. Um, you also want to go ahead and type in the uh, column headers. We need a column for 2000 a column for 2009, a column for net change, and a column for percent change. Now I'm not concerned with formatting the table in Excel because I find it much easier to do so in Word. So I'm going to leave the table in this plain format. But a couple of other things before we're finished. First, I want to rename Sheet 1 Go down here and uh, uh, right click on that tab and I'm going to select rename and I will rename this from sheet one. I'm going to rename it to table one and press enter. The other thing I want to do here is I'm going to change the color of the tab to red. I like to have those tables stand out so I know where my graphics are as opposed to the data. Um, another thing we can do, we can delete sheets two and three. Um, move up here to delete. It'll uh, go ahead and do that and 
for sheet 3. So we have just one sheet in here now, a sheet for table 1. Go ahead and save your work. <coughs> Remember that Control S is your best friend. So we're ready. This is what we want to fill with data. So the second step here is to locate the data and read it into Excel. And to do that, we're going to visit the Census Bureau website. <coughs> now you can use any browser. I happen to use Firefox. And uh, you know my browser is set up uh, with uh, 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 options that I like. But uh, um, uh, what I'll do is just uh, go to the Census Bureau. It's uh, www.census.gov. You'll notice there's a lot of information here. Um, uh, the Statistical Abstract of the United States, a link to that. A population clock, um, 6.9 billion uh, people currently uh, in the world. Uh, what we want to do is go to the poverty statistics, so we'll follow that link. From here, you notice it uh, will give you some information about uh, poverty. I want to go to the section on data. And from data, I'm interested in historical tables. And from historical tables, um, I want information on people. <coughs> You'll notice here that there are a variety of tables, uh, 25 total, with uh, different uh, data in each of those tables. Um, and notice that all of these tables appear as downloadable Excel files. That's what the XLS stands for there, along with the size of the file. Um, uh, we need to download five tables. I'm going to show you how to download Table 2. You'll need to do the same for Tables 3, 7, 9, and 23. I'll repeat that. You'll need to follow this example for Tables 3, 7, 9, and 23. So, an example with Table 2. If I click on the link to Table 2, it's going to prompt me to uh, open um, this uh, uh, spreadsheet called HST POV2 and uh, I could save it, I could open it. Um, I, I, you could save it but uh, uh, what we will do is go ahead and just open that with Microsoft Excel and uh, this is what uh, those data look like. There's one sheet here HST POV2A uh, poverty status of people by family, relationship, race, and Hispanic origin. Origin, sorry, 1959 to 2009. Um, for all people, and then people in families. So uh, we're interested in the all people category. And uh, notice this has for all races, white alone, white, etc. You'll see here for the different races uh, some of the uh, uh, headers that we were looking for. So a lot of data contained in this table breakdown for races from 1959 to 2009. Under uh, uh, Now before we do anything with this table what I want to do is move this sheet into the work the spreadsheet that we already created the one that has our table already set up. And to do that, I'm going to go to the tab again, and I'm going to right-click. And uh, this is how we did the tab color and the rename before. But now I'm going to select Move or Copy. I'll get this little dialog box. I don't really need to create a copy because I'm not going to save this spreadsheet. But I do want to go up to Move Selected Sheets to Book and select table HWA. Now I don't want to I don't want to move it before uh, my table one sheet. I want to move it to the end of the spreadsheet. So I'll select move to end and press OK. And notice now I'm in my other spreadsheet table HWA. There's the table information that I already typed in. 
along with uh, this uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so I've moved all of those uh, sheets over. You can see them down at the bottom here. Um, five sheets all told. And I have my uh, uh, table all set to start uh, receiving data. But before I start copying data from the census tables into my table, I like to go through the downloaded data and highlight the information that I'll need. So I'll, again, I'll demonstrate this on, on uh, uh, table two here, the poverty status of people by family relationship. You'll need to do this for the other uh, four tables, tables three, seven, nine, and 23. Okay, if I go back to uh, the first table here, one of the things that I need is the total, total poverty in 2000 and in 2009. Um, so from table two, all people, what I want is the percent of people in poverty in 2009, all races, it's 14.3 percent. I like to highlight it using the uh, fill color up here. That way um, uh, I'm less likely to make mistakes when I'm creating, when I'm putting the data into the table. So I need it for 2009 and I need that same information for 2000. I also need uh, uh, data for white alone, black alone, Asian alone, and Hispanic. Data again for two th 2000 and 2009. If I scroll down, notice that as I scroll down, I start to lose the top few rows and I lose what the definitions of each of these columns are. And that becomes really, pro that can be really problematic. A way to fix that is to uh, uh, go to the row immediately underneath the one that has the column header information in it. And then from the view menu in the ribbon, select freeze panes and that's it. Now when I go over here I can scroll down and those top rows stay in place and I know okay this is the column that I need the all people percent. So as I scroll down I come to white alone for 2009 go back to my home tab highlight that and I want that for 2000 as well. I know that the data for white alone only go back to 2002. There's some explanation for what's going on in these footnotes that we'll look at a little bit later. Scroll down. Um, I've got white data already. I want to go to black alone. That's the number that I want for 2009 and 2000. Asian alone. 2009. And, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, by the way, if you make a mistake ever, Control Z will erase what you just did. Um, so I just undid that. Asian alone is the number that I want. And uh, notice, by the way, when I go to uh, this cell, 2000 for Asian, that percent, 9.9 percent. Notice that uh, the D up here is highlighted and the two, uh, row 228 is highlighted. So this is cell D228. Um, I know that I'm in the right place by looking at those highlights over here and then I'll highlight that. And lastly we want Hispanic for 2009 and 2000. So I've highlighted the data here so I know exactly what I'm looking for uh, as those for those numbers to put into the table. Now, <coughs> I could, uh, I want to copy that information to the table. Now, of course, I could simply copy and paste. I could just look at the number and type it in. But uh, I want you to use a basic formula. So we're going to start in the total row for 2,000. We're going to use a basic formula. 
all formulas start with an equal sign. So I'm in the cell, just press equals. Notice that the equal sign appears here. But notice also that up here, um, I get the formula bar. So I'm ready to type in a formula. I could do anything dumb right now. I could type in any kind of formula, formula like 4 divided by 2 and press enter. And I get 2. Control Z, by the way, will get rid of that. So equals, I want to pull information from that uh, other table. So I'm going to type in equals and then go to the relevant spot of this table, total for 2000, and just select that. Notice what happens up here. It changes after the equal sign, it adds in some information. It adds in the name of the worksheet, HSTPOV2A, followed by an exclamation point, and then the cell reference for that that you want in that sheet, in this case, D18. Once uh, after you select that, simply press Enter. It takes me back over to my table, and copied there is that number, 11.3. Notice, however, when I go back and select that cell, the 11.3 appears in the cell, but up here in the formula bar, notice, it points me to that sheet in that cell. So I'm going to do the same thing for uh, total for 2009. Um, I need to start there with an equal sign. Move over there, select that, and press Enter, 14.3%. You need to do that for uh, uh, you need to do that for every one of these rows for columns B and C. Uh, that'll take you to different parts of uh, table three, seven, nine, and twenty-three, along with finishing uh, the the race information on table two. Okay, when you're finished, you should see this. I did want to note one thing, however. I did indeed make a mistake earlier on. Instead of white alone, this should be white, not Hispanic. And uh, the numbers from the table here, 7.4 and 9.4, come from the white alone, not Hispanic, and the white, not Hispanic categories. Just wanted to make that one change evident to you. Okay, so you should be able to look at the table here and verify that the numbers that you have are indeed correct. Um, now, so we have data for 2000 and 2009 in the table. It's uh, time to uh, it's time to calculate the net change and percent change variables. Um, these two columns. One thing I'd like to do, uh, just to, uh, there's a couple of places here that you'll see this, the 13 up here, the 9 and the 19. Notice that there are, um, uh, that they, they're the only values there that don't have a single decimal point. So what, I, what I'm going to do is highlight all of those cells and I'm going to select from the number format up here, um, I'll select this format cells number just by clicking this little arrow. And I'm going to select number with one decimal place and press OK. And notice now all the numbers in here have a single decimal place, even those that are 0 0.0. That gives me some uniformity across all of those categories. Okay, now to calculate net change. The formula for net change is easy. It's the later year minus the earlier year. So to do that, I'm going to use a formula, equals. I need to select the, vet to figure out the net change for males, I need to get what's in cell C2 here and subtract from that the contents of cell B2. Well, I've got a formula started. I can again just point to the right cells. This time, C2. But instead of pressing Enter like I did before, now I'm going to 
add the minus sign and then point to B2. So my formula there is take what's in C2, subtract from that what's in B2, and I press enter, and notice I get 3.1, which is exactly correct. Now, I could type in you know, that same formula over and over and over again down uh, th this column, but that's not necessary. There are a variety of ways that I can copy that formula. One is to simply highlight that, press copy, and then I could select a range of cells and press paste. And notice it's doing exactly what I want it to do. 15.6 minus 12.6 is 3.0, and notice that it change that to C3 minus B3 and the next one is C4 minus B4 etc. Those That's one way that you can copy a formula. Another way is to highlight a cell like this one and notice right now that the cursor is kind of a chunky plus sign but when I go up to grab that little square box Notice it changes to a smaller plus sign. That means I can grab that little handle there and I can pull this down and I'll do that the rest of the way. And that is a second way to copy a formula. B6 C6 minus B6, 7 minus 7, 8 minus 8, etc. Okay? Uh, now the formula for uh, uh, the formula for percent change is a little bit more complicated. We'll type in equals 100 times open parenthesis 1 minus B2 slash C2 to parent two close parentheses. Okay? 100 times 1 minus B2 over C2. And I obviously made a mistake. Oh, I had one too many uh, parentheses, and it's asking me here to accept the correction. I'll say yes, and the number I get there um, is 23.84615, etc. Again, too big of a number. Um, uh, well, let me go ahead and copy that for the rest of these. Just go ahead and grab that and I'll pull it down. But now I want to format this. And I'm going to show you a little bit different way. For f I'm going to show you a different kind of formatting here. I'm going to again go up to Format Cells. Uh, but instead of selecting number here, I want you to create a custom format. Um, just by hitting that custom thing and then um, I want to type in just from right here plus sorry I'm right there go ahead and highlight that type highlight general type in plus zero semicolon minus zero and then press enter now I have no decimal points here, which is what I want, but notice it has plus signs for all the positive values and minus sign for the one negative value. So I've got all of my data here um, the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, census data sheets. I've calculated net change and percent change. Um, go ahead and press Control S uh, to save. You should be doing that periodically. A um, couple of other things we need to do here. Uh, one is uh, to sort the data. Now the data are not uh, in the the data are only in the order uh, that I typed in the uh, uh, row headings over here uh, when I first started. Um, I want to sort this in an analytical way, and I have four choices. I can s uh, four broad choices. I can sort on the basis of uh, the data for 2000 or the data for 2009 or net change or percent change and I can also sort in either ascending or descending order. Um, so I really have eight options here. Now the appropriate option for this I believe is to sort on the basis of 2009 and to do that in descending order. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and just place the cursor in that row. Um, there's a couple of different ways I can do that. Go over to the Sort and Filter button here, and I can simply select Sort Largest to Smallest. Boom. Note they're in descending order. I could change that. Um, I could change it from smallest to largest. Exactly the reverse. There's one other way that I can do that. I can go to Custom Sort. Notice that it uh, picks up on the fact that my data has headers. I want to sort by the column 2009 instead of one of the other columns. I want to sort on those values and I want to sort from largest to smallest and press OK. So I've shown you a couple of different ways that you can sort there, but uh, our data, uh, the data is now in an interesting, I think the appropriate uh, sort order. Now a couple of other things, it wouldn't hurt to add a title and footnotes and a source at this point. Um, title is pretty straightforward. We'll go ahead and, uh, but we don't have room to put the title in. So I'm going to select this first row and I am going to insert a row above that. And I'll just type in the title, table one period percent of people in poverty by categories of age, race, sex, region, and nativity, colon, 2000 to 2009. Um, I, I should type in a footnote here. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, skip doing that at the moment. I'll just say note. And underneath that, I'll say source. It's always good to put source information in right now. Um, uh, I'll put in just a little bit of source information. Um, I'll go back to my web page for the Census Bureau. And this URL is what I want. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in right there. Close parenthesis, and I'm done. Okay, so I have all of the information here in Excel ready to be copied over to Word for formatting. Um, even though I put in, uh, we put in the, a space for note, uh, for a footnote, and for source information in the title, um, we're only going to copy the table part of this. So highlight um, rows 2 through 20. Uh, columns A through E. Go ahead and press copy or control C. Move over to your Word document and uh, rather than just uh, hitting paste um, we're going to look at uh, different options we have here for pasting. Notice that there are six different options. Um, the first of those is to keep the source formatting. And what that does is whatever format you have in Excel is the format that you'll see in Microsoft Word. That uh, isn't what we want to use here. Instead, if we move over to the second option, it says use destination style. And that puts it into the format that you already have, of, uh, that you're already making use of in Word. Um, and for doing tables, I think uh, that's a little bit more appropriate, uh, at least for our purposes. I find that to be a better way to go about doing tables. So we'll go ahead and uh, press this button. And notice we now have that uh, table uh, ported over to, uh, uh, to Microsoft Word. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to do here uh, right off the bat. There, uh, I want to begin formatting. Um, one of the things that we need to do is get rid of all of the lines in here. So what I'm going to do is select the entire table and notice that whenever I am anywhere in the table, the table tools appear in the ribbon here. Uh, there's a design tab and a layout tab. 
We'll go to the Design tab. We'll select Borders. And notice that all of the all of the borders are selected, but we'll go here and hit No Border, and that gets rid of every line that's there. A second thing that I'd like you to do, um, this is always a good idea when working with tables in Word. Um, you can place the cursor any place in the table, and from the Layout tab, hit Table Properties, and we want to indent from the left 0.1 of an inch, and press OK. Third thing, you notice that all of these values in the table are left justified. That's okay for the text over here in the row. It's not appropriate for all of the numbers here. Let's go ahead and select every one of those, uh, every, every piece of information in those last four columns. And from the Layout tab, notice that I have Alignment. And I'm going to pick Align Center Right. And that works beautifully for all of the numbers here. One of the things that uh, I need to change, however, is for the two, um, or, is, or is for this row up here. Select that entire row, and we'll s uh, select a line bottom right. And that puts uh, the, the year numbers in the same uh, 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 height as the uh, same alignment as the uh, um, two uh, change uh, uh, columns. If I go over here to the text, notice that these are all aligned left top. I want those to be aligned left center. Boom. Just a little thing, but now everything in this row is in line. It'll look a little bit better. Um, third thing, um, well, I uh, I really don't need to change anything else about the widths of the columns there or the positioning. Um, I do, however, want to put uh, some lines in. So I'll select the first row, or lines or borders. Um, you know that uh, we need to have a, a top border here on the table, and we need to have a, a border underneath that uh, header row. And then down at the bottom, last row, we need a bottom border. Um, so I know you can't really see the top one. I'll show that uh, to you in a minute. Uh, but that's uh, uh, a function of the table starting at the very top of the document and the fact that I have this text outline turned on. Um, we need to be able to put in a title, and it will be a little problematic at the moment uh, because if I were to go to the very top of the document, I'm in that cell. And if I start typing in a title, right, um, it does things that I don't want it to do. So Control Z, I'll get rid of all that. And uh, what I need to do is create a space above that. To do that, place the cursor in the top row, and from the Table Tools Layout tab, select Split Table. You notice that puts a space above that. That's exactly what I want. Now I can type in the title Table 1, percent of people in poverty by categories of age, race, sex, region, and nativity, colon, 2000 to 2009. A uh, couple of other things. I'm going to select all of that text. I'm going to change the font. I like to use trebuchet. And I'm going to make that 12 point bold. Um, notice, however, that uh, um, kind of obviously this title extends the entire width of the page well beyond the right border of the table. So I'm just going to uh, keep that uh, cursor someplace in the title there. Doesn't matter where. Notice over here, um, you may have to hit View Ruler to get this ruler to appear. 
and go over here and grab this little house shaped thing and pull it over to about there. Maybe one more. There you go. Table one, percent of people in poverty by categories, etc. Got a nice title for my table. One thing that I haven't done in the table, I want to highlight in some way the total column. There are three ways that I want to highlight this. Back to the uh, table tools. Um, design, I want to put a border both on top and on bottom. From the Home tab, I'm going to bold that and italicize it. Notice that, that total value stands out now. And I know, the way this is sorted, that anything above that total is greater than average poverty, and anything below that total is lower than average poverty. Go underneath the table now. I need to type in a footnote. Note, colon. By the way, I want to make that italicized. Sorry, italicized. And uh, this is information that I actually got from uh, f uh, a footnote in, from the Census Bureau. I'm going to show you, um, I'll go back to my Excel spreadsheet. And I'll pick any one of these tabs, it doesn't matter. I'll just go to the first one, go all the way to the bottom. Notice that it says footnotes are available at census.gov, uh, etc. Um, poverty, HHES, -H -H WWW, poverty, histpov, footnotes.html. So we'll go back to the Census Bureau here. Poverty. Oh, notice it says footnotes right there. I'll go ahead and click on that. That makes a whole lot of sense. And uh, You'll see all of the footnotes in here. A lot of them are not important to us, but uh, um, you ought to always read the footnotes so you know what the data um, are about. But notice that it says the 2003 current population survey asks respondents, respondents to choose one or more races. White alone refers to people who reported white and did not report any other race category. Um, and as it continues, it says uh, black alone refers to people who reported black and did not report any other category, um, etc. So uh, we're going to go back to uh, uh, with that information in mind. I'll go back to the bottom of the table here, and I'm going to say the 2009 Current Population Survey (CPS) asked respondents. to choose one or more races. The categories, Asian alone, black alone, and white not Hispanic refer to people who reported only that race, whoops, that race and no other race category. People of Hispanic origin may be of any race. That's the note. Source. Again, I want to make that uh, in italics. Uh, U.S. Census Bureau Current Population 
Information Survey Historical Poverty Tables. People Tables two, three, seven, nine, twenty three. Then I want to get that uh, URL. Go back to uh, my table here. Just uh, go ahead and actually, I'm just going to select that information. Control C. Go back here. Control V. Oops, got an extra parenthesis. But there's the URL. Period. Couple of things here. I want to want to uh, uh, change the margin, just like we did for the title. Move that over to about there. Maybe a tiny bit wider. A um, couple of other things. Reduce the size of that uh, source and node information from ten point to nine point. Um, need to clean up a little bit this URL. Uh, need to find a spot to uh, add a space. Notice uh, right there, right after the www does a good job, but also, at least in my uh, uh, version of Word, it converted this first thing to a hyperlink. Uh, that's why it's blue and now underline. I'm going to go up there, right click, and say remove hyperlink. And then uh, kind of one last thing. I'm going to go up to this note. The note is too close to the bottom of the table and too far apart from the source. So I'm going to put my uh, cursor anywhere in there. Select paragraph. And I'm going to change the spacing here after to six point and before to six point press enter. So again, control S is your best friend. Save periodically. There you have it. We have a table of all of the census information that we're interested in. Uh, the poverty for 2000-2009 net and percent change. We've got that table in uh, Microsoft Word. To complete the assignment, you need to write a few paragraphs. First thing you need to do is focus on the social indicator, the measurement of these things. What does that 22.5 represent? What exactly is that? What does the 25.8 represent? What is the 3.3 and the plus 13? You need to describe the social indicator, the measurement issues. Um, and part of that is described in the note there about uh, how the racial categories are measured. Um, but you'll need to know what it, what the, uh, what poverty means here for the Census Bureau. Um, after you talk about the social indicator uh, information, you need to make some observations by looking at the table. Um, what observations can you make? Um, you know, I, I mentioned uh, uh, one thing you can focus on are those things that are above uh, average poverty or below average poverty. You can look at uh, uh, net and percent change from 2000 to 2009. There are a variety of things that you can focus on. Make relevant observations and uh, type those paragraphs in immediately under the table here. Um, after you're done, upload both the Excel file and this Word document in Moodle. And again, in order to get uh, full credit for the lab, you need to follow these video instructions carefully. The Word file, the table in the Word file, needs to look exactly like this. And the Excel spreadsheet needs to contain all of those census data spreadsheets along with on that table, uh, that first table page, 
this all, the, all, these all have to be formulas um, needs to be in this order etc okay so uh, have fun let me know if you have any questions